Roswell, Alien Interview, Chapter 13, A Lesson in the Future, Matilda O'Donnell McElroy, Personal Note. I think this transcript speaks for itself also. I relayed Errol's exact communication as faithfully as possible. My superior officers became very alarmed about the possible military implications of what Errol said in this interview. Official transcript of interview, top secret. Official transcript of the U.S. Army Air Force. Roswell Army Airfield, 509th Bomb Group. Subject, alien interview, July 31st, 1947, first session. It is my personal belief that the truth should not be sacrificed on the altar of political, religious, or economic expediency. As an officer, pilot, and engineer of the domain, it is my duty to protect the greater good of the domain and its possessions. However, we cannot defend ourselves against forces of which we are not aware. The isolation of Earth from the rest of civilization prevents me from discussing many subjects with you at this time. Security and protocol prevent me from revealing any but the broadest general statements about the plans and activities of the domain. However, I can give you some information that you might find useful. I must return to my assigned duties on the space station now. I have provided as much help as I feel ethically able to offer, given the requirements and constraints of my duties as an officer, pilot, and engineer of the domain forces. Therefore, I will depart as an ISBE from Earth within the next 24 hours. Editor's note, the following several paragraphs appear to be personal comments made by Matilda to the stenographer regarding her interview with Errol. What this means is that Errol will leave her doll with us as her craft is damaged beyond repair. We can examine, dissect, and study the body at our leisure. She does not have any further use for it, nor does she have any personal feelings or attachments to it, as others are readily available for her to use. Errol does not recommend that there are any technology in the body that Earth scientists will find useful, however. The technology of the body is simple, yet vastly beyond the reckoning of our current ability to analyze or reverse engineer any facet of it. The body is neither biological or mechanical, but a unique fabrication of materials and ancient technologies not found on any Earth-type planet. As Errol mentioned previously, a very rigid and distinctive hierarchy of social, economic, and cultural classes exists throughout the domain, which has remained unvaried and inviolate for many millennia. The body type and function assigned to an ISB officer vary specifically according to the rank, class, longevity, training level, command level, service record, and meritorious citations earned by each individual ISB as with any other military insignia. The body used by Earl is specifically designed for an officer, pilot, and engineer of her rank and class. The bodies of her companions, which were destroyed in the crash, were not the same rank or class, but of a junior rank. Therefore, the appearance, features, composition, and functionality of those bodies were specialized and limited to the requirements of their duties. The junior officers whose bodies were damaged in the crash have left their bodies and returned to their duties in the space station. The damage suffered by their bodies was due primarily to the fact that they were officers of lower rank. They used bodies which were partially biological and therefore far less durable and resilient than hers. Editor's note, at this point the transcript appears to resume with statements made by Errol. Although the domain will not hesitate to destroy any active vestiges of the old empire operations wherever they are discovered, this is not our primary mission in this galaxy. I'm sure that the old empire mind control mechanisms can be deactivated and destroyed eventually. However, it is not possible to estimate how long this may take, as we do not understand the extent of this operation at this time. We do know that the old empire force screen is vast enough to cover this end of the galaxy at least. We also know from experience that each force generator and trapping device is very difficult to detect, locate, and destroy. Also, it is not the current mission of the Domain Expeditionary Force to commit resources to this endeavor. The eventual destruction of these devices may make it possible for your memory to be restored simply by virtue of not having it erased after each lifetime. Fortunately, the memory of an ISBE cannot be permanently erased. There are many other active space civilizations who maintain various nefarious operations in this area, not the least of which is dumping unwanted ISBEs on Earth. 
None of these craft are hostile or in violent opposition to the domain forces. They know better than to challenge us. For the most part, the domain ignores Earth and its inhabitants, except to ensure that the resources of the planet itself are not permanently spoiled. This sector of the galaxy was annexed by the domain and is the possession of the domain to do with or dispose of it as deems best. The moon of Earth and the asteroid belt have become a permanent base of operations for the domain forces. Needless to say, any attempt by humans or others to interfere in the activities of the domain in this solar system, even if it were possible, which it definitely is not, will be terminated swiftly. This is not a serious concern, as I mentioned earlier, since Homo sapiens cannot operate in open space. Of course, we will continue with the next steps of the domain expansion plan, which has remained on schedule for billions of years. Over the next 5,000 years, there will be increasing traffic and activity of the domain forces as we progress toward the center of this galaxy and beyond to spread our civilization through the universe. If humanity is to survive, it must cooperate to find effective solutions to the difficult conditions of your existence on Earth. Humanity must rise above its human form and discover where they are and that they are Isbees and who they really are as Isbees in order to transcend the notion that they are merely biological bodies. Once these realizations have been made, it may be possible to escape your current imprisonment. Otherwise, there will be no future for the Isbees on Earth. Although there are no active battles or wars being waged between the Domain and the Old Empire, there still exists the covert actions of the Old Empire taken against Earth through their thought control operation. When one knows that these activities exist, the effects can be observed clearly. The most obvious examples of these actions against the human race can be seen as incidents of sudden, inexplicable behavior. A very recent instance of this occurred in the United States military just before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Just three days before the attack, someone in authority ordered all the ships in Pearl Harbor to go into port and secure for inspection. The ships were ordered to take all the ammunition out of their magazines and store it below. On the afternoon before the attack, all of the admirals and generals were attending parties, even though two Japanese aircraft carriers were discovered standing right off Pearl Harbor. The obvious action to take would have been to contact Pearl Harbor by telephone to warn them of the danger of a fight starting and to put the ammunition back and order the ships to get out of port into the open sea. About six hours before the Japanese attack began, a U.S. Navy ship sank a small Japanese submarine right outside the harbor. Instead of contacting Pearl Harbor by telephone to report the incident, a warning message was put into top-secret code, which took about two hours to encode. Then it took another two hours to decode. The word of warning to Pearl Harbor did not arrive until 10 a.m. Pearl Harbor time Sunday, two hours after the Japanese attack destroyed the U.S. fleet. How do things like this happen? If the men who were responsible for these obviously disastrous errors were stood up and asked bluntly to justify their actions and intentions, we would find out that they were quite sincere in their jobs. Ordinarily, they do the very best they can do for people and nations. However, all of a sudden, from some completely unknown and undetectable source, enters these wild, unexplainable situations that just can't exist. The old empire thought control operation is run by a small group of old baboons with very small minds. They are playing insidious games with no purpose and no goal other than to control and destroy Isbees who could otherwise manage themselves perfectly well if left alone. These types of artificially created incidents are being forced upon the human race by the operations of the mind control prison system. The prison guards will always promote and support oppressive and totalitarian activities of Isbees on Earth. Why not keep the inmates fighting between themselves? Why not empower madmen to run the governments of Earth? The men who run the criminal governments of Earth mirror the commands given them by covert thought controllers of the old empire. The human race will continue to shadow box with this for a long time, as long as it remains the human race. Until then, the Isbees on Earth will continue to live a series of consecutive lives over and over and over. The same Isbee who lived during the rise and fall of civilizations in India, China, Mesopotamia, Greece, and Rome are inhabiting bodies in the present time in America, France, Russia, Africa, and around the world. 
In between each lifetime, Anisbe is sent back again to begin all over, as though the new life was the only life they had ever lived. They begin anew in pain, in misery, and mystery. Some Isbes have been transported to earth more recently than others. Some Isbes have been on earth only a few hundred years, so they have no personal experience with the earlier civilizations of earth. They have no experiences of having lived on earth, so could not remember a previous existence here, even if their memory was restored. They might, however, remember lives they lived elsewhere, on other planets, and in other times. Others have been here since the first days of Lemuria. In any case, the Isbes of Earth are here forever until they can break the amnesia cycle, conquer the electronic traps set up by their captors, and free themselves. Because the Domain has 3,000 of their own Isbes in captivity on Earth also, they have an interest in solving this problem. This problem has never been encountered or effectively solved before in the universe as far as they know. They will continue their efforts to free those Isbes from Earth where and when it is possible, but it will require time to develop an unprecedented technology and the diligence to do so. Editor's note, the following statement is a comment by Matilda. I think that it is Errol's sincere desire, as one Isbe to another, that the rest of our eternity will be as pleasant as possible. Group. Subject. Alien Interview, July 31st, 1947, First Session. It is my personal belief that the truth should not be sacrificed on the altar of political, religious, or economic expediency. As an officer pilot and then my superior officers became very alarmed about the possible military implications of what Errol said in this interview. Official transcript of interview, top secret. Official transcript of the U.S. Army Air Force. Roswell Army Airfield, 509th Bomb Engineer of the Domain. It is my duty to protect the greater good of the Domain and its possessions. However, we cannot defend ourselves against forces of which we are not aware. The isolation of Earth from the rest of civilization prevents me from discussing many subjects with you at this time. Security and protocol prevent me from revealing any but the broadest general statements about the plans and activities of the Domain. However, I can give you some information that you might find useful. I must return to my Roswell Alien Interview, Chapter 13, A Lesson in the Future. Matilda O'Donnell McElroy, Personal Note. I think this transcript speaks for itself also. I relayed Errol's exact communication as faithfully as possible. 